The average human needs somewhere between 1,200 and 1,500 calories a day to function optimally. But what would happen if you went way overboard and ate somewhere around 10,000 calories today instead? Sounds like a question for our old friend Brainyard. You see, Brainyard has recently gotten into bodybuilding in an attempt to get swole and impress the ladies. And eating 10,000 calories worth of food sounds like it'll work well with his bulking program. But do you think all those calories will end up turning into muscle or fat? And will his system even be able to handle the caloric overload? Guess we'll find out. Calories, calories, calories. You see that word crop up everywhere these days, especially in relation to food. But what are calories anyway? The term calorie actually refers to a unit of energy. Now, in theory, that energy could come from any fuel, coal, wood, natural gas, etc. But usually when we mention calories, we're talking about them in a nutritional sense. So carbohydrates, fats, and protein. According to an article in an early edition of the Journal of Nutrition, one calorie is the amount of energy to raise one kilogram of water from zero to one degree Celsius. So your average chocolate bar, which typically contains around 200 calories, contains enough energy to boil two kilograms of water, or boil one kilogram of water twice. Hashtag math for the win, am I right? Contextualizing calories in this way might make your daily intake of over 1,200 seem pretty intense. After all, that's a lot of boiling boiling water. But just think about how much energy it takes to power organs like your brain and your heart and move that big ol' hunk of body around all day. And all of a sudden, things start to make a little more sense. Of course, following this logic, people who are more active should need more calories, which is why, according to the National Institute of Health, moderately active females can eat around 2,000 calories a day, while moderately active men can have up to 2,600. Now, the source of your calories matter hugely in terms of your physical health and how you feel. After all, you can eat 2,000 calories of cake or 2,000 calories of lean meat and vegetables, but only one of those options will lead to healthy results. While most diets recommend limiting calories from sugars and carbs and increasing calories from fats and proteins, in general, it's best to eat a varied diet in order to make sure you're getting all the nutrition you require. So, considering moderately active people top out at around 2,600 calories per day, does anyone really have any justification for eating 10,000? Well, that depends. Power lifters and bodybuilders like Brainyard here spend long days in the gym aiming to build muscle. And in order to build muscle, you do need to consume more calories than you expend. However, most people only really need to consume on average around 500 additional calories a day to build that muscle. Anything more is kind of overkill. Well, unless you're an Olympian, that is. These peak athletes are the only ones that should be eating anything close to that many calories a day, and that's because they're going to put their bodies through the rigorous training necessary necessary to use them up. Take Olympic swimmer Ryan Lochte or Michael Phelps, for example. Ryan's breakfast on a normal training day consisted of five to six eggs with spinach, tomatoes, and ham, hash browns, pancakes, oatmeal, and fruit with a French vanilla coffee. And if you think that's a heavy start to the day, just wait till you hear Phelps's. On a training day, the 21-time gold medalist eats three fried egg sandwiches with cheese, lettuce, tomatoes, fried onions, and mayonnaise, a five-egg omelet, a bowl of grain, three slices of French toast with toppings and three chocolate chip pancakes with a couple of cups of coffee to wash it all down. Now that's what I call a real breakfast of champions. Of course, Phelps doesn't stop there. For lunch, he has a pound of pasta, two large ham and cheese sandwiches, and some energy drinks. While for dinner, he'll have another pound of pasta, an entire pizza, and what the heck, a couple more energy drinks. By his perhaps slightly exaggerated estimates, his daily training intake totals around 12,000 calories. And judging by 5% body fat, he needs every calorie he can get. Of course, it goes without saying that the average person should have nowhere near this many carbs and sugars in their daily diet. But let's imagine we give Brainyard this exact diet for a day. How does he fare? Well, to start, he might not even be able to choke down all that food. Training as hard as Phelps and Lochte do is bound to work up a fierce appetite. But for someone who's just lifting weights for a couple hours a day, it'll be difficult to burn enough calories to get through such large portions. Even if he does pack it down, his stomach will feel uncomfortable.
uncomfortably full. After each meal, Brainyard's blood sugar will skyrocket as his body converts carbs into glucose, and his cholesterol, blood pressure, and fluid retention rates will undoubtedly spike too. Although they should all come down within a couple of hours, and he may even get a little sleepy after each meal as his body redirects energy towards his stomach to help him digest all that food. Fortunately for Brainyard, there are no real long-term negative effects of his 10,000 calorie binge. He'll probably feel a natural urge to eat a little less over the next couple of days as his body balances things out. If not, he might put on a pound or two of fat due to the excess. But overall, he'll be no worse for the wear. That said, Brainyard shouldn't make a habit out of eating this much food. At least not until his Olympic training gets underway. But that's for another video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons, then head on over to the Brainiac YouTube channel for more tasty, tasty facts. See you later, Brainiacs.